are we still doing boring conventional Zambian tags in 2020 as if we don't already have a plate full of things that define the real Zambian experience to talk about? Too loud? Tonight I want to talk about all things Zambia, a little politics, marriage, school, mental health, and dysfunctional relationships. We're going to attempt to reframe the problem rather than throwing the towel. Hi guys, it's Mombolua, engineer, unconventional corporate badass, digital creator, and your girl's girl. Bear in mind, this Zambian is walking through the valley of the shadows of death talking about stuff like this so nonchalantly because I'm Zambian currently living in the diaspora. <laughs> this is true. Well, last I checked, my passports are still green, so we're having this conversation, Bane. It's extremely important for me to be extra culturally sensitive about our current existing norms. For that reason, I'm going to try my very best to use my cultural intelligence and give tangible and tactical advice. This is not some infomercial. The goal is to educate my audience and make us more aware of the biases that are happening in our community. If you can't sit through my Zambian tag and actually discuss what it is to be Zambian and talk about our social and cultural issues, then you're too young for me, bro. I'm 27. To be on YouTube at my age and joking around is a joke. This is gonna be a good one. Grab some popcorn and a hand cream, shall we? Let's talk more degrees, less independent learning. Zambians love school, natural born scholars. Heck, I don't know a single Zambian that would not jump at the opportunity to improve themselves because our parents and theirs truly embody erudition. I'm not saying don't go to school and don't get an education. What I am saying though is be intentional about the kind of education you get. College isn't the only way to become an expert. It doesn't always mean spending four years at an institution because some of us aren't cut out for that way of learning while the rest of us can't afford it. And then there's those of us that fall in between. I'm looking forward to seeing a passionate and futuristic Zambia. Passionate about the things we love to do with the future at heart. Because we are gold baby but sometimes being a zambia means mumbolua do this course because you make a lot of money or mumbolua don't do that course because the neighbors are going to laugh at us what i'm saying though is if you're passionate or curious about something you owe it to yourself to pursue it boldly i say don't be modest be bold. Zambian culture, religion, and family traditions consider modesty a virtue, which eclipses one's ability to even admit their own talent. You're either an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, or a lawyer down. Dear youth, we cannot raise our children the way our parents raised us, because our parents raised us for a world that no longer exists. I believe that the future of jobs is varied job skills per individual. Even Tamanga is a skill. The days of only relying on knowing one field of study, applying the 40-40 life plan, working 40 hours a week for 40 years, and then retire are gone. I mean, would you rather work 40 hours a week at a job you hate, or let's be candid here, a job you don't have, or work 80 hours a week doing work you love? The real nightmare is not complacency. We work hard, but what's the point in chasing after the same three opportunities that are thrown at all of us year after year? We really can't depend on tourism alone to market us anymore. The animals are tired of looking happy on camera on National Geographic. The real question is, a majority of us willing to risk what our idea of a career is in the interim for an opportunity to create better. Majority of us are still paralyzed by the fear of disappointing our parents. Zambia, if we're going to survive this, we're going to have to become pathological optimists. Zambia's population is young. 82% of our population is disgruntled youth. Meet our good community leader. When you say the AGM would 
decide whether the Kamanga executive continues or not, where does it leave the letter that was written by FIFA? So much for being youthful. Poor guy still hasn't figured out how to put his phone on silent during important engagements. Millennial 101. 82% is a dangerous statistic. Because of this age structure, more young people are entering the labor force each year looking for jobs. Population projects suggest that the age structure is going to be the same for many years to come. This means that we need to create jobs faster and in large numbers to meet our rising demand. It suffices to say that the future of work in Zambia is primarily about the youth. So we need to start getting creative about the creation of decent opportunities at least. Everyone should have two careers, one for survival and the other one for passion backed by career one. Meanwhile, blue collar jobs are still a joke. The business of tech hasn't really kicked up yet and no one is talking about artificial intelligence or how it's coming after our jobs while the rest of us are trying our hardest to become a South African influencer in a Zambian economy. Sis, <laughs> we're just trying to get paid the same. <sighs> The next level in time combines various skill sets and experiences to effectively collaborate and not just arbitrarily team up just because a position has to be filled up or nepotism. Also, we need to throw away the idea of if you're not top of your class, then you are doomed because you have failed at life. Because people are failing at life based on this idea alone. You can't win. At least he got an A in music. That's a career in my books. It's not about the grades. It's about applying yourself towards the things that interest you so that you can become an insane innovator. We love to see that. We love to see it. Speaking of failure, everyone is thinking it, so I'm just gonna say it. Leadership in Zambia, let's just put it this way, uninspiring. This is a public service announcement to encourage us to go and vote. Vote because it's your right, vote because it's your civic duty, and vote because being neutral in situations of injustice means you've chosen the side of the oppressor. Also, I'm appealing as a mother of the nation. I'm appealing. <laughs> respect what the hell is this when did politics in zambia become so ghetto and i mean the ghetto the ghetto <sighs> i hate it here honesty and integrity are a foreign language in the grand scheme of all things leadership as a young zambian i miss a good old-fashioned presidential debate maybe we're gonna get one this time around once outside opens back up Edith Nawami on the FDD table. You need that motive, ladies and gentlemen. You need to look at all of us. And I think what will differentiate us candidates is not how eloquent we present ourselves, but how we deal with the issues that are affecting our country. Speaking of women, we make up majority of the Zambian electorate. Hey girl, hey, stupendous. Let's get out in large numbers and show them how women really vote. I know my audience. College educated, vote. Tusikana, vote. Latamanga, vote. Everybody, vote. It's unimaginable to take any leader seriously if their actions don't match their rhetoric. There are more weddings and less marriages these days. I promise I'm not anti-marriage. My parents are still together till this day. It's just some women remain fixated on the idea of poofy white dresses, tiaras and tiered cakes, forgetting that they now have to go home and finish raising this man forever. Marriage is work. Love is usually the foundation, then comes responsibility, finances, ill-mannered family, and a whole lot of pretending to care about the stories of the other side of the family. 20,000 divorces in 2019 alone? What the statistics are saying is that most of us are really just marrying a bunch of strangers. Wait, you're being scammed. 
30 year old women are not old. You have time to date. A little face cream and illuminator fixes everything. We also have to stop forcing men to marry us because am I the only one that knows this? Men don't marry the woman they love. Men marry the women that were there when they got ready. We're also borrowing colossal amounts of money from banks in addition to forming committees to mandatorily fund our wedding. Now even committees have committees. If that's our culture, then I don't want it. That's the only plus side of being abroad. Ma komitika fella, exempt or extra credit. <laughs> you really don't have to. <laughs> Wouldn't it be more beneficial to fund your own wedding and form committees to contribute towards the start of your lives? Like buying a piece of land to build on, an education fund for your future kids, or even capital to start a new business, or further your education. Let's normalize that. We need to change the way we spend and see money. Anything but dig ourselves into more debt, zero empowerment, and strained relationships with friends because of a contribution you felt entitled about. I know. Many of us don't know how powerful we are without a man. Find your power, then choose your man. In that order, the age you decided or decide to get married is nothing but an independent variable. Run the regression yourself. <laughs> no more generational trauma for our kids. Let the only things they inherit be good vibes, confidence, and generational wealth. <laughs> Society and your pressures? I'm not sure why we all think we owe each other answers. When are you getting married? Stop asking people why they're still single. Nobody asks you why you're still married. When are you having a baby? Get out of my uterus. I mean, if you want to start a business, apply for a course, or educate yourself independently, don't let them stop you because no one knows enough to be a pessimist about anything. Let's normalize not taking advice from people who have never been where we're trying to go. The truth is, no one will like you when you start to achieve things. They will give you false advice just to hold you back. They will try to make you doubt yourself. Just remember babes, no one is coming to save you. As for you haters, when you see your friends winning, clap. It doesn't dim your shine. If anything, it makes you a winner by association. Normalize celebrating the little wins in your social circles instead of worrying about their wins, their confidence, or their glow and how it makes you feel like trash. Focus on your own grass because your grass is only as green as you water it. As we prepare to walk into our 30s, let's normalize talking less about people and more about ideas. I just thought I should throw that in there because as a country, we love Molomo. We love to hear it. As for mental health, Generally, falling ill in a Zambian home is taken very seriously. Except for the moment you laugh, you're not sick anymore. Get up and go and wash the dishes. There are no mental health days in our homes. We have to do better. Here's an unpopular opinion. The idea of poor mental health doesn't always equate Chinama mental hospital. They're simply not mutually exclusive. And learn that. Tribe, if you're secretly dealing with anxiety, depression, unresolved anger, serial isolation, and fear, you're most likely going through it. You're not immune. If you're the breadwinner of your family, you need someone to talk to. If you recently got dumped or found out you were sharing with like a man, you need somebody to talk to. If you can see the end of your 20s around the corner and are still single, you need to talk to me. Ma'am, this is 2020 and our biological clocks do not define us anymore. Be unapologetically single and level up. If you have more month than money, you need someone to talk to. If our homeland injustices are getting on our nerves, say it with me, we need someone to talk to. If you're HIV positive, you need someone to talk to. Also, can we normalize not stigmatizing sick people? Find a social group now and talk to someone immediately because you're not alone in this. My favorite Zambian mental health advocates are Pearl Chunga, Namsale Msonda, and Mary France. DM these amazing women and they'll be more than happy to get you resources to help you through your instability. It's about having relatable conversations 
not stigma. The goal is mental stability. If you don't willingly make time for your wellness, you will be forced to make time for your illness. We all have at least one gay friend, right? I can't be the only one. It's time to come out the closet, Zambia. And I'm not talking to the gay people, I'm talking to the rest of us. We just can't pretend they don't exist. So what we gonna do? First of all, I stand firm on us being called a Southern African country. Also, the State Department has recalled the U.S. ambassador to the African nation of Zambia from the embassy there. And it has to do with the American diplomat, um, with the American diplomats speaking out against the country's record on gay rights and speaking out against government corruption. You can't fix gay people by sending them to jail. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. The only people whose arguments I'm interested in are those whose religion involve a Zambian superior being like Niambe the God. Everybody else? throw it in the trash. I already know what you're thinking. Mumbala, what in the secularism is going on? If you're Zambian, you're either Christian or Muslim. There are no in-betweens. Seriously, if you convert to another religion, you will make your mom cry. If you're an atheist, don't tell your family because we're a Christian nation who occasionally accommodates the Muslim community and that's it. We honestly need to do better at isolating sin. How we feel about them is none of their business. What, or should I say who they feel, is none of yours. I'm just clean living and loving Jesus. Mm -hmm. Some of us younger Zambians absolutely adore the thriving LGBTQ plus more community when we watch them on TV, but cringe when we imply the inclusivity of great Zambians and the LGBTQ plus more community. No one is the real thing. Some of us just have fewer lies to tell and less skeletons in our closets. Women, we are on our own. If you belong to a culture of friends who don't elevate you, you're doing friendship all wrong. Collect that refund. What if I told you that there are friendships out there where women actually love each other, travel the world together, start businesses together, and drag each other to the finish line? Wouldn't that be nice? Challenge your social circle and give them a productivity deadline. Walk away if they default. The last thing I wanna do with my precious time is bat eyelids over some dusty men or kick a woman down. The problem is for a long time, our culture has glorified raising responsible Zambian women while coddling irresponsible entitled men. A group of dysfunctional men is called a pandemic. We are the men we wanted to marry. Seriously though, Zambian men, let your dysfunctional society of friends know that only respecting the women you're attracted to is not respecting women. If I hit a nerve, don't fool me, do better. The real reason why people have such poor relationships with each other is because we're too expectant of each other. No one owes you anything. Honestly, many of us would sleep better at night if we set the tone for how we're willing to reach out to our relations. We also have the friends who won't dare support your business because it hurts. Listen, nothing builds self-esteem and self-confidence like self-accomplishment. Not that sexually transmitted success that you see on the internet. Not judging. We're just not addressing your privilege right now. And now we have situationships. I'm a millennial, what's that? And let's not forget the dreaded friendships at work. Your friends will trip you and make it look like Ghana Tripa. Sisters, let me let you in on some gems. Do not limit your work social circle to your little office department. Seek acquaintances in different departments, different floors, and especially different industries. Do this and you will never miss a work friend again. Friendship in different circles is where true collaboration begins. If all else fails, be okay with some friendship bankruptcy. Solitude does wonders. But what do I know? 
I'm just a bold, lousy, born Lumanda loving Zambian who still thinks Ina and Angelo is the ultimate Zambian TV experience, celebrates our cultural diversity when we show up for each other on the ever thriving Z Twitter and can't stand the largest in running public affairs and profligacy managing the economy. Ooh, as an educated Zambian, here's something I find ridiculous, microaggressions. You speak English so well or where you actually, actually from is not a compliment. Kinayo, what's your unique Zambian experience? Leave your comments in the section down below. Just remember, be nice or... Here is my block. Alfea, block on Facebook, block on WhatsApp, block on phone, block on Instagram, block, 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 block. I will see you guys in my next video.